Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to this episode of Hope at Home on Tour. Tonight, we are in the city of Bonn, and in fact, we are in the Beethoven House, the birthplace of Ludwig van Beethoven. And of course, this year is his 250th anniversary, a very important year for the composer, and we are in a very important institution. This is not only the house in which Ludwig van Beethoven was born, but it has become the most important institution in the world, bringing together over 80 scholars and Beethoven experts. It has one of the largest collections of manuscripts and letters in the world, and it is a source of constant inspiration for so many people who love and study Beethoven as we do. So a big thank you to the Beethoven House Bonn that we're here, and a big welcome to Mr. Kirill Gersteiner. Welcome back, I should say. Uh, if you saw one of the early episodes in the Gedächtniskirche in Berlin, he was my guest and gave an absolutely fabulous recital, and he's here again tonight. Welcome back, Kirill. It's wonderful to be with all of you and with our audience uh, live and also uh, viewing it uh, via the internet. And we have um, a beautiful program tonight, which is based around Ludwig van Beethoven. Uh, I'm sure for a pianist, it must be very special to be here, right on the top of the vault in which so many of those manuscripts are kept. Yes, I feel, uh, I'm certain some uh, energy sources emanating, f uh, even through all the concrete that's, uh, that uh, protects the, the vault, but all the manuscripts, I think, are uh, making the piano vibrate in a different way, for sure. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the very first president of the Beethoven House Bonn was the violinist and composer Josef Joachim. He is one of the most fascinating figures of the 19th century, not only a wonderful violinist, but somebody that really understood about the presentation of music. And it was he who was responsible, together with the citizens of Bonn, in keeping this birthplace of Beethoven alive. Without him, we probably wouldn't be standing here today. And since the beginning of this year, I have the great honor to follow in his footsteps as the new president of this institution. And so we thought tonight we would begin with a piece by Josef Joachim. This was composed in 1854, and it's one of his three Hebrew melodies. Thank you. 
That was music by Joseph Joachim, one of his Hebrew melodies based on songs and poems by Lord Byron. If you're just joining us, this is Hope at Home on tour, and we are in the Beethoven house in Bonn. And if you'll allow me to speak German for a couple of minutes, uh, I'd like to greet the audience that we're here, meine Damen und Herren. Herzlich willkommen, wir freuen uns sehr. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass Sie hier sind, dass wir hier sein dürfen. Und als äh, Malte Böcke uns vorher kurz angekündigt und es gab schon einen Applaus, äh, Kira Gerstein sagt es mir, ach, Applaus, ist das nicht schön? <lacht> ähm, <le> Applaus I was just telling our audience that Kirill Gerstein told me as we were about to come on and we heard the sound of applause, he said, ah, that's applause, that's what it sounds like. Of course, for many months we've been more or less without applause. And in fact, the last uh, public concert that I gave before the lockdown was exactly here on this stage on the 10th of March. It was part of a series dedicated to Beethoven. And uh, the world was very different back then, was it not, Kirill? Yes, it really seems like a lifetime away. But more even than the applause, I think it's the sound of communal listening and of communal silence when we are paying attention to this magical substance that music is. I think that is something that we miss sorely every day and um, I think we can only hope for uh, a restoration of uh, concert life as soon as um, it's possible and safe. Has your perception of music changed in the last three or four months? I think the... Um, Good reassurance, inner reassurance, is that the love, the love for music remains absolutely the same and um, uh, burns uh, for me as, as always. But uh, of course, um, just now feeling for the first time actually playing something with uh, you listening, um, it changes immediately. It changes what, what happens with the timing. It changes what happens with the thoughts and feelings. So these two really should not be separable. My next guest this evening is one of the finest singers in the world. And uh, he was a guest already on one of the early episodes back in my living room. He's here for the first time today in the Beethoven house. We are thrilled and very proud to have him. And in fact, it's the first time that he is collaborating with Gil Gerstein. It's a great pleasure to welcome Matthias Goerner. We start with a with a song by by Schubert, uh, Frühlingsglaube, and uh, there uh, we play a uh, lesser known Beethoven uh, Beethoven uh, song. Afterwards, two songs by Mendelssohn, and at the end you hear again in homage to uh, to Beethoven, to the men of this house, uh, a song that's uh, quite. Uh, a humorous one from uh, from from Beethoven on this occasion.
Those were five songs performed by my guests, Matthias Goerner and Kirill Gerstein. Music by Ludwig van Beethoven, Felix mendelssohn Bartholdi, and also Franz Schubert. And uh, if you're just joining us, this is coming from the Beethoven House in Bonn, the most important institution connected to Beethoven in the world. We're in the magnificent concert hall in which there are several hundred concerts and events every year. In the adjacent building, one has the museum with many of the artifacts and relics connected to the composer Beethoven, some of the portraits, and directly underneath us is a vault, the likes of which you've never seen, ladies and gentlemen, some of the most extraordinary manuscripts and letters and original connections to the great master. Ludwig van Beethoven is celebrating, or would be celebrating, his 250th birthday, and uh, you might have seen him down here. Uh, he <laughs> has been accompanying us throughout this whole series. Mr. van Beethoven uh, usually had been in my living room from the very beginning, but when we started to go out uh, on the road, we thought it was imperative to take him with us. Uh, he looks after us, and we look after him, and we thought if we're coming back to his birthplace, then it's only right and proper that he joins us tonight. Of course, we could not be in Beethoven House without playing music by Beethoven. And uh, Kirill Gerstein, when I asked him, which piece would you like to play? He answered immediately, the Moonlight Sonata of Beethoven. Now, this title, Moonlight, was not by Beethoven himself. One wonders what he might have made of that title, but it, of course, has become known as the Moonlight Sonata and is perhaps one of the most famous sonatas that Beethoven himself composed. And in fact, the manuscript is directly beneath us here in the vault, and Kira Gerstein was very lucky to have the chance to look at it before he came up today. When I saw him, he was rather pale, and I asked him <laughs> if everything was okay, and he said, yes, I've just seen the manuscript. Um, but he was all the more passionate to come and play it for you today. So please welcome back to the stage Kiel Gerstein.
was the so-called Moonlight Sonata by Ludwig van Beethoven, played by my guest this evening, Kirill Gerstein. Kirill, 
you were talking earlier about what it was like to see the manuscript uh, of the piece that you just played. At an earlier episode, Thomas Hampson was with me in Richard Strauss's villa where he composed so many things. And he said it was very daunting to see the manuscripts, to see that uh, reflection so close to music that you studied your, all your life. Is it a help or is it a hindrance? It's, it's a help, but especially it is just um, very moving. Um, it's very moving to feel the reality and the traces of the, of the genius in our physical world, because, because Beethoven, his piano music, for example, this sonata quasi una fantasia, are such large objects in our minds, uh, conceptually and emotionally. But then to see that this paper was, was touched, and for example, the thing that I saw uh, today or paid attention to today, the third movement of, of, of this sonata, the passion and the impatience of, 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 the, of the man. It, it literally looks like wind is blowing through the, through the pages. And I could see um, he, he was getting very red at the front. I think he was happy uh, <clears throat> to hear you. We have him with us today just to, yes. to add the pressure to you. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't see that element. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are in the Beethoven house in Bonn, the most important institution in the world that is here to support and preserve the legacy of Ludwig van Beethoven. Uh, the first president of the society was Josef Joachim. And uh, in fact, there are several connections in my life and uh, in my family also uh, to the great Joachim. Um, in fact, this violin on which I'm lucky enough to play is the 1742 uh, Guarneri del Gesù, the ex Lipinski. And Lipinski was a marvelous violinist from Poland who was friends with Franz Liszt and also with Robert Schumann. He performed with Schumann. In fact, the Schumann Carnival is dedicated to Lipinski. Um, and after it belonged to Lipinski, who became the concertmaster in Dresden, it uh, was purchased by uh, a German violinist called Ernst Schiever, who was the second violin in the Joachim Quartet. And so um, this instrument has been very close to uh, a number of uh, my heroes and idols, but especially to Josef Joachim. And so um, for me, uh, to assume the presidency of the Beethoven House uh, is not only a great honor, but it feels also as if this is coming back home. Um, we are now going to play a sonata for piano and violin. It's the fourth sonata, the A minor, which uh, is often described as a rather wayward child. The first three sonatas were not a great critical success. The fourth one, together with the Spring Sonata, as it's known, were published together at the same time, around 1800. Um, I love this sonata, but it's not one of the most popular sonatas. What, what do you think makes up this, this very particular piece? Well, I think there's, a, and in that sense, uh, I like that, uh, partly through discussion, partly through our preferences, uh, that this sonata today is next to the uh, to the quasi una fantasia for piano, especially with that last movement, because I think this shows um, this shows the manic uh, and the obsessive side of Beethoven. This this first the first movement and the second movement, again, um, the humorous uh, side and and a good natured one. So so they're very interesting sort of emotional tones to. Um, to both uh, both the pieces that we that we that we have this evening, and uh, and I think it uh, it shows that that uh, how um, virtuosic and creative Beethoven is not only compositionally but also emotionally. Also, the fact there are no slow movements in this piece. Uh, each of the three movements uh, are of a kind of a pressing quality. The presto, the fast opening, and then the andante in the, in the, in the second movement. It's as all, almost as if he has n nowhere to breathe. He keeps us breathless till, till the very end, don't you think? Yes, and in some way, and speaking about Joachim, I think there's something Schumann-esque about this, uh, also about this first movement that it, uh, that it will do, actually, in fact, maybe all three movements, that it will do things on an impulse. It's, uh, it's, um, it feels not as uh, structurally planned as some other 
more monumental pieces of Beethoven. Not to say that I think this is not planned, but it gives this illusion of uh, uh, kind of an outburst of creativity that I think inflamed uh, Schumann's imagination very much. And one critic uh, called this spicy. So we'll see if we can play in a spicy manner. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll think about Joachim. <laughs>
was the sonata for piano and violin by Ludwig van Beethoven, the fourth sonata and uh, a masterpiece. I don't know of any other piece that finishes quite like that with that enigmatic magic and that sort of whispering quality, that dying away. We're coming uh, to the end of this extended edition of Hope at Home. Uh, this is a concert which is being broadcast to you from the Beethoven House in Bonn, and my guests tonight are Matthias Goerner, the singer who was with us beforehand, and great Russian pianist Kirill Gerstein. Before we play the last piece, I would like to uh, say a couple of thank yous to a number of people. This is, in fact, the last episode of uh, Hope at Home. We started back on the 25th of March, uh, many months ago, and if I think we've now come up to almost 70 episodes. Uh, this program has been streamed by more than six million people around the world. Uh, and I think it's rather fitting that we're uh, today in the Beethoven House bringing you a final uh, episode, uh, a homage to Beethoven and the people around him. But this program would not have been possible without uh, a very long list of people. I would like to start by thanking the uh, people here from the Beethoven House in Bonn, Malte Bucher, and his entire team uh, for allowing us to come in here to use the facilities. I can encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to go online and check out the Beethoven House. Uh, all of the manuscripts that we talked about, or most of them, and the letters, you can access online. So it's a wealth of information. I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, uh, Frau Lambrecht Schadeberg and Herr Kranz also for their magnificent support uh, of this whole journey that we've been on. And then, of course, I would like to thank people uh, who made this production possible. I'll start with Arte, um, the channel on which we broadcast, uh, a magnificent German-French broadcaster uh, that is devoted to culture and to sharing culture, a public broadcaster. I would like to say a big thank you to Wolfgang Bergmann for having uh, the idea um, and for making this happen, as I would also like to thank Tobias Feyen then the production company, I'm sorry, it's a long list, uh, production company Cobalt, that's uh, Stefan Mathieu, uh, René Pepke, and Marijn Beisel. It was very important for me when I was decided to do these streams that we had sound that really sounded as if you were in a concert hall. Um, and thanks to Teldex Studio and the magnificent technicians there, we were able to create that. And I would like to say a big thank you to Tobias Lehmann, <clears throat> to René Müller, and to Wolfgang Schiefermeyer, to the guys um, behind the cameras who make us look a lot better than we are, uh, to Jean, Daniel, Florian, Luca, Jonah, Nepo, Marvin, Hannah, and of course to my team, Daniel and Christina. But especially a big thank you to everybody at home who has followed us uh, on this extraordinary journey around the world. We would um, like to end with Johann Sebastian Bach and the first movement of his C minor sonata.
Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've come to the end of tonight's episode. A big thank you to Gerald Gerstein and uh, to Matthias Görner. Thank you for watching. Please.